Huda Nation, Chris Vogel and John Hendricks of Boot Crew Media here with another pregame show. Saints, Cardinals, short week for the Saints. Tough loss against the Bengals in week six, but they have a chance to make up for it quickly on Thursday night. This game's going to be one of those Amazon Prime video features that everyone's going to tune in for. Should be a really exciting one because I think you're looking at two teams that kind of have their backs against the wall in desperation mode. Cardinals and Saints, both teams that people had maybe playoff expectations, two and four. We'll see who gets out of it. And the first thing that comes to mind, John, with especially Saints games over the last couple of weeks has been the injury report. Hasn't gotten that much better. Now, Chris Olave is returning, and we'll talk about him in a minute. But regarding you know Michael Thomas, Marshawn Lattimore, Jarvis Landry, Andrews Pete, and uh, Adam Troutman, the five big names that were listed immediately as inactive, I, I don't think those are any surprising news there. But what are kind of your first takes about those five being out for this game? Yeah, look, I, I don't think it's surprising with Pete. And obviously we got some good news that it wasn't a, a serious injury. I think that was the biggest fear that you might have a, a torn pec or something and had some history there. But that's good news to start. We talked to Adam Troutman in the locker room actually on Tuesday. And so he seemed in good spirits, wasn't in a walking boot. You know, he, he you know seemed pretty optimistic. Obviously, I think that's more precautionary too that – Look, uh, he avoided a serious injury, which is a good thing. But, you know, the big three, Jarvis Landry, still dealing with that ankle injury. We talked about it on here last week in pregame that, you know, he's, he had that stuff all around his, his foot and such. So uh, I think with him, Michael Thomas and Marshawn Lattimore, probably more precautionary than anything for some of those guys, probably Lattimore in particular. I think Landry will be back and Thomas will be back for the game against the Raiders. But, you know, look this is kind of the thing that happens when you're facing the fort to a short week. And so um, on the good front, you know, Andy Dalton and Jameis Winston aren't carrying an injury designation going into this game for Pete, you know, Calvin Throckmorton is questionable with that hip injury. We'll see if he gets to go. If not, it's going to be undrafted rookie Lewis kid uh, to, to take his spot. So, uh, and then as far as Keith Kirkwood goes, you know, I talked to him in the locker room yesterday. He sounded really optimistic that he should be able to play in this game. So, you know, look again, you probably don't get too excited about something like that, but getting Alave back, Kirkwood, and then we'll probably talk about Alante Taylor soon, but that could be real big boost for the Saints team coming up. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned Olave. Is it one of those situations where it's as simple as Saints fans should kind of expect him to pick up where he left off for this Thursday night game? Yeah, I think that's fair to say. Um, you know, I as, as long as the pass pro holds up and, and that they don't, go too much away from what their game plan was but you know look I don't see there's any reason why they shouldn't be able to ground and pound this out and man we we called it last week we talked about the winning formula for the Bengals I think this is a winning formula against the, the Cardinals this game is don't let Kyler Murphy have a, a ton of uh, possessions here lean on Alvin Kamara sprinkle in some Taysom Hill sprinkle in some Mark Ingram lean on that offensive line Andy Dalton has to doesn't have to throw this 30 40 times a game but when he does, needs a conversion. Chris Olave is so good at his route running. I think he can get behind the defense in a lot of ways. Um, Nick Vanette's going to be up in this game too. So in the tight end front, you know him and Juwan Johnson. I, obviously, you're going to be two of the ones to to look at. I it, it brings an interesting wrinkle because I don't know if they're going to use Taysom more at tight end or what they're going to end up doing. So that's something to keep an eye on too. Cause last week he was running routes like a wide receiver. So and he was getting open on some of the plays too. So. Uh, very interesting how it might shape up. But look, as far as Alave, I expect him to lead in targets, you know, probably eight to 10 targets easily during this game. The secondary for the Cardinals is, is talented. So, you know, there's going to have to be some looks there for sure. But I think their friendliest thing for this game is try to ground it out in the trenches with that uh, Arizona Cardinals defensive line. And I think they can find some success there. Yeah. And, you know, we talked about it before and, and you just mentioned it when we were talking about the injury report. So many people are asking Andy Dalton and Jameis, no injury designation in terms of questionable, doubtful, out, whatever. But Andy Dalton spoke to you guys earlier, and that kind of seems to be usually what happens for someone who's going to start leading into the game. Is that kind of where the lean is here, or do you think it really is a we don't know who's starting on Thursday night? No, I think that's where the lean is. And the thing is, we were there Tuesday, and, and obviously I'm in Phoenix today, but I didn't get to see things. But Tuesday, uh, you know, Andy was taking – quarterback one reps so I think that was a good indication and then if he's healthy look I, you know reading the tea leaves and, and just hearing what Dennis Allen has to say is they don't want to roll Jameis back out until he's 100% now I would, could tell you this that at Tuesday's practice Jameis moving around extremely well he's he's probably been the best I've seen him in a while just from his attitude body demeanor all those types of things and so 
I think there's a situation here that's like, I don't think there's a big rush to say we need all these guys back for this Thursday night game. It's, it's week seven. You know, if this was week 16, 17, yeah, we need these guys. They're going to play. Right. But I think they're trying to get all these guys and use this mini buy, if you will, after Thursday to try to get healthy, try to put together some games. Cause look, you look at the schedule, there are some winnable games here. I think the Cardinals is a winnable game. you got the Raiders behind them. That's a winnable game. I think they can beat Baltimore. I think they can beat San Francisco, Los Angeles. These are teams that maybe at the start of the season you're like I don't know about this and you see how the things are shaping out across the NFL that I think that things are going to work in their favor but you know look Dalton I, sh- I I'm pretty sure all signs are pointing there to him being QB1 we'll see I don't think there'll be any Taysom at QB1 I've seen some stuff about that or even Jameis but you know Jameis was and again going back to last week he was healthy enough to be the emergency quarterback given the needs with Troutman being out I think Taysom's probably tight in two, maybe tight in a three on this one if they roll him behind Vanette. And then Jameis is probably QB two. And it's just he's got to get healthy and make sure he's good to go because there is no quarterback controversy in New Orleans right now. He's going to be the QB one when he's fully healthy. Yeah, you know, good to hear that. And, you know, you talked about the schedule kind of opening up and and – We've said it for weeks, what the schedule looks like in May, it never turns out being the case, and, and we're seeing that now as it goes on. But in order for the Saints to kind of string together wins that you mentioned are there for the taking, one thing that needs to get better, and I can't believe I'm saying this because this was not the case the first three weeks of the season, the defense has to improve. This is a unit that the last couple of games, particularly the, the Vikings, Seahawks, and the Bengals games, they've struggled. And there's two things that I would say have really kind of stood out. One the missed tackles, which is something that you don't expect from a Dennis Allen defense because, let's be real, over the last couple of years, they have been fantastic. And then the other part, which I kind of talked about today on Twitter, they're not forcing many turnovers, particularly in terms of forcing interceptions. They have one through six games. They had 18 all of last year. Which out of the two flaws right now kind of concerns you more, uh, You know, even just for this upcoming game? I'd go a step further. I think the tackling is is probably bigger than the turnovers because I think the turnovers have come, um, but the tackling has been the problem I've had. Now, we talked to Ryan Nielsen. He thinks that all of that is going to come in time and just stay the course type thing that, you know, the biggest way to fix tackling is to work on tackling, and that's what they did this week, right? And so it's just one of those things where he's like, it's not from a lack of effort. I'd be a little bit more concerned if it was a guy not giving a, a, a hoot and trying to make a tackle. But I think for me what's been – the biggest problem with the saints defense is, is, you know, we talked about them being a defensive first type team, right. And put it on a defense. This is a defense that can get a stop when they need it the most. They haven't done that this season in big situations. And I get there's been problems with the offense. There's been all these different things, but when they've needed to stop the most, the defense has gone to hell in a handbasket. And I don't think there's anything other way, other way to put it. Final drive against the Vikings, long play to Justin Jefferson. You talk about the Seahawks. They almost gave that game away had it not been for like a DK Metcalf thing. Uh, Bengals, 60-yard hookup to Jamar Chase. I mean, that can't happen. I mean, you just look at all these games. There's been some big moments that this defense could have turned the tide. And for a team that talks a lot about this being a defensive first team and put it on the defense, They've got to, to step up and they've doing they're doing a lot as it is. Don't get me wrong, but you know, even against the Bucks, they needed that and they just let things go. I mean, they you just look at every loss that they've had, and even against Atlanta, that's that the one that they won. I mean, there's just types of things. So that's kind of the concern for me is just the inconsistencies there in the big moments. This defense used to be able to get those stops and be able to stop them. But, you know, I think that's the most concerning for me. Uh, I think the deep the tackling will get resolved. Um but the turnovers, I think they'll come just like the sacks will come. But, I mean, against Arizona short week, nobody knows Thursday night football has kind of been a dumpster fire of a product. So there's no telling what we're going to get in this game. It could be a, a, a six to nothing game. It could be a, a 34 to 31 game with all sorts of turnovers. We just don't know. Yeah, after the way the last two Thursday night games <laughs> went, for the sake of Kirk Herbstreet and Al Michaels, I hope it is a better game. Yeah. Uh, we'll kind of see how that unfolds. But that's an excellent point uh, about them not really being able – to make the crucial stops when it matters most, but maybe this will help the defense. The return of Alante Taylor. This is a kid who, you know, everyone throughout the off season talked about him developing at a really impressive rate. And I know it's such a limited sample size, but in week two, when he was kind of thrusted into action against the bucks, I thought he did a good job of stepping up to the plate. What kind of role could we see him in? Is it, you know, an a option where we could see him in the outside, maybe in the slot. Can he be moved anywhere? Uh, you know, whether what you're seeing at practice, 
and kind of what we know about the Saints secondary right now with them dealing with a couple of injuries and also just not playing up to their standards right now, what's kind of the hope here for Elante Taylor? Yeah, I think he's probably more of your outside guy. And I think if they if they choose to do it, they could roll Paulson and Diabo. Now, that's another one that he's dealing with a knee injury. He's limited, questionable going into this. I, f- I feel like it's trending upwards, but that's another thing just to keep an eye on, right? But you know, I feel like he could play on the outside with Paulson and Debo. And I'll tell you what, I'll even going back to training camp, those two were kind of joined at the hip a long time. And I think he's learned a lot from Adebo. I like his physical style of play. You know, again, it's kind of one of those boomer busts sometimes. But look, he's a smart guy, takes well to coaching, knows his assignments, knows how to, to, to really get the most out of things. So I wouldn't be surprised if he's quarterback number two on the day and they put Roby back in the slot. So it really depends on how they utilize the practice squad moves. If they bring up Chris Harris again, that would be the third game. That's the max you can do for a vet like him. Or, or they feel like, you know, calling up Taylor is the right move and, and potentially using something else. Because, you know, let's face it, they the only other options they might have is like a Bryce Thompson who can play versatile on this team. But, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting. But I, I think it, at best case, you see Taylor is QB or CB2 tomorrow. At worst case, he's back to making you know, all sorts of noise on special teams. But interestingly enough, on Tuesday, you kind of saw him taking some of those top reps at cornerback. So something to watch. Um, but he's a very electric player. He plays extremely fast. Well, he just checks a lot of boxes. And for, you know, uh, all those that really criticize that pick, you know, way back when because of his role, you kind of start seeing it unfold. So I think he could really be something special for this defense if he's, his number is called, which I, I kind of expect it to be called this week. Yeah, now that'll be something to watch for sure. And I'll say in a season that's been kind of tough through the first six games, if that, there's a silver lining there if he comes in and makes an impact, another rookie to add with Olave uh, to give the Saints that that boost. Switching over to offense before we kind of get to you know the final factors of what will determine the outcome here. Two players that people want to see more of, at least from what I've seen on Twitter. Obviously Taysom Hill, because it seems like Saints fans can't get enough. But the other one who really just immediately kind of popped was Rashid Shahid and what he did in that Bengals game with the end around. People keep wondering, why didn't we see enough Rashid Shahid after? I think it might be just as simple as, look, it's his first game. They probably didn't have a heavy dose of him involved in the game plan. But do you think that's something we could see more of moving forward? Because we saw that the kid could fly. Yeah, I think it's more of like the Deontay Hardy role. Obviously, I think that's the biggest thing. And look, they tried tried him early in the game. I mean, he burnt Eli Apple, right? And so had that been a better connection between quarterback receiver, that could have been his touchdown to start the game, right? And so um, I like the fact that he does get involved a little bit like that in the jet sweeps, whatever you want to call it. He's fast. I mean, he's definitely a weapon. And so with Alave coming back, I mean, they're going to have Traquan, Marquez Calloway, obviously, and then Kirkwood. You know, I don't know how much realistically you're going to get as, as far as touches go and just kind of the ebbs and flows of this game. But look, I'm excited to see him work with Jameis because I know Jameis really liked using Deontay Hardy a lot in the offense. I think that's possibly something good that benefits Rashid Shahid a little bit down the stretch. But look, I think giving him a couple touches a game, I I get it. I understand because you try to go with the hot hand, but between him and Taysom Hill, I think it could have been more of a byproduct because Jameis was emergency quarterback QB three and, you know, didn't want to risk Taysom getting hurt as much too. But you know, I could see both sides of the coin, right? But again, I think Taysom had some plays where, again, I, I think we talked about it, put it out there before that the Bengals were daring him to throw, and he ended up throwing the football a couple of times, but, you know, nothing to set the world on fire. But, you know, look, I think he's a, a, a versatile weapon. And again, I go back to the original way I said that this game can be won is ground and pound, mix it up, sprinkle some Taysom in. I, I don't think that's a bad thing to do. And so, um, you know, going from 23 snaps the week before in Seattle where he affected the game so much to 15 only and not doing as much but still playing a factor, you know, Pete Carmichael's got to make sure he does a good job here. And and I think those touches will come because there's just so much ball to spread around. Really, if anything, I just need to see a better red zone offense because last week they were just bad. You know, I aside the the one time they got in the end zone, but they got to be way better in the red zone. That's that's If they were better in the red zone last week, they would have won. No, no, no other factors. They could have let Jamar Chase run wild. They would have just executed there. They would have won that game. Yeah, and, and look, it's great to know that Will Lutz can go for four for four in a game. But ideally, like you said, you rather have more touchdowns and field goals. The, before we get out of here, John, you know, you talked about this being a game that is gettable. And, and I talked about it on my podcast yesterday. And I was saying, if you ask me to put the slight lean here, as bad as things have gone for the Saints, I'm looking at a Cardinals team similar to New Orleans where – 
they seem broken, but I think that although the Saints have lost more games than we expected with the first six, over the last couple of weeks, I'm seeing, at least on offense, an identity forming. I don't know if I've really seen that in Arizona, and I know a lot of people bring up, well, the Saints are banged up. My counter argument would be the Cardinals are very injured just like them right now. They're going to be without their starting left guard, without their starting center. They're going to be without Hollywood Brown. James Connors questionable. He hasn't practiced at all this week. What are you kind of expecting for this one? Look, I'm not saying I feel comfortable and saying, you know, put your money on it that the Saints are going to win this game. But I think this really is a game that they can have for the taking. And three and four, you have a mini buy. Like you said, you go in back home. That could be some momentum there. What are you kind of expecting from this one? Yeah, I, I would kind of agree with you there. And, you know, look, DeAndre Hopkins comes back, but he also hasn't played the first six games. Look, he's going to be a force. I, I know DeAndre Hopkins is going to be a baller. I don't know if he'll have the type of day that Jamar Chase had, but, you know, he's the type of guy you can throw a 50-50 ball and, you know, 99 times out of 100, he can come down with that. He's just so talented in that way. You know, you pick up Robbie Anderson. That's a guy to keep an eye on. You know, obviously uh, Rondell Moore is another one that you kind of kind of keep an eye on. But, you know, if Connor can't go, you know, Benjamin is still a pretty talented guy. And I think for me, it's just kind of reflect on what Ryan Nielsen said on Tuesday is just Kyler Murray, man. You know, he's just so elusive in the pocket. The mobile quarterback has killed the Saints defense uh, in the past, especially like guys like Jalen Hurts. Hopefully you don't see Kyler take it, you know, 10, 15 carries. But, you know, look, that's the thing is they got to make it count. Try to not make him cater to where he can extend the play and find the receiver and such. But, look, I feel that Arizona's been really struggle bust, right? And, look, Cliff Kingsbury's seat I think is a little bit hotter than people want to talk about, right? And so I think there's a lot of pressure on some of these coaches, especially if you have a guy in waiting like a, a Sean Payton, you know what I mean, it, that are saying, oh, well, if things go bad in Los Angeles, maybe he goes there. If things go bad in Arizona, maybe he considers that. I mean, you know, there's a certainly checks a lot of the boxes for him. But, you know, look, I think this is an extremely attainable game for the Saints. Again, if you go to two and, and uh, at six or whatever, or two and five, I don't think it's the end of the world because I think they can climb out of the hole. But at the same time, three and four is going to look much better. You get a chance to rest. You got some momentum going into the home game against the Raiders. And then obviously that things are going to set up for even more after that. You know, Baltimore is a big opponent. You got Pittsburgh down the line, obviously, in November. So, look, I think it's an extremely winnable game. Saints just got to not kill themselves. And, again, you even go back to last week. Last three minutes is what decided this game. They were in control for 57 of the 60 minutes. And those three minutes were killer for them. And so, look, I think um, they can come out with a win. I think they can surprise some people because, you know, look at what Seattle was able to do. And Seattle was one of the worst defenses the Saints faced, right? And they only held them to nine points. So I think that the Saints, if they can have a good ex uh, execution on their game plan, can come out with a win and get a much needed win going into a, a little bit of rest. Yeah, and those were all great factors you mentioned. And like you said, you talk about hot seats. These are two teams – Everyone kind of said, or for the most part, they could be playoff caliber. We'll see what happens. I'm not saying this is a loser leaves town match, but there will be a lot of urgency, and I think that makes for what should be a really exciting Thursday night game. If the Saints could pull ahead and win that one, then you could see what John kind of talked about with that schedule opening up, but they got to win on Thursday night first, and we'll see what happens. Saints-Cardinals this Thursday should be a really exciting one. We'll see if the Saints can get on the board and improve to 3-4. and four.